Hello friends. Um, I'll try to start off lighthearted, but I feel like uh, the topics I'm a little bit preoccupied with right now are a little depressing. So I guess content warning, I'm in a depressed mood. Um, so funny story, I am wearing this black dress. It's one of my clothing rentals. Um, this is the second time I've worn it this week. Today's Wednesday. And you see with my new schedule, I work at one office Monday and Tuesday and another office Wednesday and Thursday. And so I was totally gonna cheat and wear the same outfit Monday, Tuesday, again on Wednesday, Thursday. And as I'm driving to work and I have already wore this dress <laughs> this week, um, I get a text from my boss that was like, hey, you have to report into our office today. We had a call out and we need you. So, <laughs> I'm just kind of laughing because I am wearing the same dress I wore on Monday. Um, but with the um, extra note of I put leggings on today where I was bare legged on Monday and I put a different hoodie on top of it instead of the jacket I wore on Monday. So I was like, other than them noticing I wore a black, two black dresses this week, I don't think they'll notice it's the same dress. But the whole day I giggled because I was like, I got caught. And tomorrow, the real question is, am I gonna risk it and wear that dress that I wore on Tuesday again on Thursday? Or am I, I think I'm gonna bring a spare like sweat, like a shirt and like tights or something because that dress is a little bit easier to identify and I don't want to be caught in the same dress twice. And then the bigger question is on Friday, when I report into the uh, potentially other office will I try to wear this damn dress again or will I just shove it in the mail back on Thursday but anyway that made me laugh so that's my lighthearted start to this uh, <laughs> vlog also my nails are very Lisa Frank right now which does make me very happy um, I'm using one that's like Jaguar themed and then there's like pink and blue glitter everywhere it makes me happy so at least my nails make me happy. Um, if you're thinking, my God, that woman looks very tired, it's because I am. Um, and yesterday afternoon, the pack and play that my mother ordered for our infant arrived. And last night, Oliver was sleeping so terribly, I literally was like, I wish we had made the pack and play so that I could put him inside of it and also lay inside of it and like, let him crawl all over my dead body because I was so exhausted last night. I just just wanted to go to sleep and he was so awake. And it's not like he's fussing. He doesn't need my comfort. He's just awake. And it you want to be frustrated, but he's so fucking cute because like you look at him and he's all uh, he's all smiley. He just wants to be cuddled and I don't know. I th I think he was having a hard time sleeping because. For one, it got cold again. It's like in the 40s right now. And um, my mom turned the AC, it's not AC, but it's like a fan that blows cool air. She turned that on him. And I would have been cold if I was a baby, but I don't know. We have such completely different temperatures. Like my mom thought the cool air on him would be nice where I thought it was cold. And then I'm pretty cold blooded. I don't know, anyway, doesn't matter. I'm just exhausted. But anyway, so the thing that's been on my mind all day today is sickness and death. And I know that that's jolly. Um, but part of the reason I'm doing these videos is because of the slight fear that my child won't get to know who I am as a person. And that's because my own father got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer when I was eight years old and he died when I was 12. So I have this like sadness that I carry with me where I'm always thinking about how I wish I had more videos of him. I wish I had like just more memorabilia of him. And so I started doing the five and 35 videos when I turned 35 and I was pregnant because I, I wanted to leave behind these like media bites where if something was to happen to me, Oliver could go back and know who I was as a person. Even if it's a person who cusses about him, because clearly I love him to death, 
but I also will, s I think, fondly call him a little fucker when he keeps me up all night and I'm exhausted. So, you know, it's one of those, like, I want him to know me for the flawed person that I am. And if this legacy of leaving little YouTube videos helps get him that insight, if for some reason something happens to me, I'm, I'm happier to leave it and it not ever be used than to not have taken the time and for him not to have a fuller picture of who his mother is. So it's a little depressing, but um, there's been a couple things that have happened in this past year that have really like weighed heavily on me, I guess. And today I've just felt a lot of sadness about it. Um, sometimes I feel like am I taking other people's tragedy and like consuming it in a way that's like a performative sadness but it's it's not it's like even if I don't know this person as well as I should or never had the opportunity to know them I feel sad now when people die and that's a change for me I have to be honest when my father died at such a young age kind of had a cruel outlook to death. I mean, I still don't believe in heaven or an afterlife. So, you know, to me, death is very final. And I used to be more okay with that. And then, you know, my friends started passing away for multiple reasons, whether it be suicide or overdose or sickness. And it just started hitting me differently than it did when people's, like, uncles would die. Like, I used to have a very, like, blasé, like, I don't care when people's older people die. People die. That's what happens. My dad died. You don't see me all wrecked about it. But then when people my own age started passing, that's when it started to get to me. Because I think I saw more of a loss in the potential that those people had just being diminished and the world not being with them anymore but still going on like you know it's just it became harder for me to accept that the world could be as joyful and happy as it was while they existed in it now that they were gone so anyway that's something that I've struggled with since I started losing my friends and then um I think it was two months ago I had a friend lose their child and I had never experienced having to process that kind of tragedy I mean I'd had friends who had had miscarriages and I had one friend who'd had a child born with a very you know serious birth defect and the child passed quickly and those were sad for me but not not like the way it's hitting me now and so when my friend lost her teenager two months ago I, I it's it'll punch the air out of me to think about and it's not that I knew him but I know her and I understand her loss but now with the con extra piece of having my own child and trying to even like touch the surface of that kind of Pain. I just can't and it's hard for me to know how to support her um, and her family because I don't believe anything I say can take the edge off of that loss but it's not like you can fill that loss with material goods or like it's just it's beyond my comprehension of how to help and um, I've had friends who are actively battling cancer or been in remission but it was in the past two years I had a boss die from the cancer that um, she had and it happened so fast and it was one of those like I saw a message on Facebook about her passing before I saw the announcement that she had passed and so then I had to backtrack and go what did I miss how did I miss this and it's just that it happened so fast and so I mean, my father died of cancer, and I understand how cruel that is, but I never lost, like I said, somebody my age, and um, today I found out the news that somebody I know who's my of my age um, 
got news that their cancer had become terminal. And so I'm just filled with so much sadness. And again, like my friend losing her child, I don't, I don't know the words you use. To, like, what do you say? I mean, and so I've been grappling with that all day, not in the context of trying to find the right words for her and her family, but more of, it, it just reminds me of how frail, in short, our lives are. And in the context of my own husband being a smoker, you know, or, you know, one day I'll have to cope with losing my mom. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not in a place where I'm ready for sorting those kind of emotions. Um, and then to sprinkle on top of all of that melancholy, um, another child who is like a couple days younger than Oliver, um, that baby has been in the hospital and oh, I'm going to sneeze on you. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, seeing a child the same age as my own baby be so sick really is scary because then it puts into the whole frame of like it could happen to anyone's baby like the illness they picked up is very common and you know people with children young children are so don't let strangers hug and kiss your babies because this could happen but to see it actually play out it's scary and we're still in a pandemic I was talking with one of my besties about her three-year-old and she was saying yeah we're hoping that the Pfizer vaccine will be approved for two and up so that we can get him vaccinated and you know then we'll be able to start going out to the world and so then it kind of makes me feel a little like oh no are we being careless with our own child by wanting to go out into the world you know we've got this trip planned for uh in September and like my mom just bought a family pass to the zoo and I'm really excited to take Oliver to the aquarium because he likes looking at fish and you know, am I introducing my baby into an unsafe world because the pandemic still exists and he is not vaccinated, but he might be getting the benefits of the vaccine from my breast milk. And I just wish there was more science so that I could feel safer knowing that. But anyway, so I don't know. I, I don't know how to end this video in the same way that I don't know what to say to people, but I just feel very sad today. Um, and I just want everyone to take care of themselves as best as one can um, because you're important and your health is so uh, fragile in ways. So I love you and take care and hopefully the next time I make a video I'll be in a better place.